Hello and welcome to a somewhat odd and what is unfortunately going to be a very short episode of Bevo's Tech Back. Um, so I had all the best plans today to record some stuff, to do some exploration in the Twilight Forest, maybe uh, poke around with a uh, hollow hill and stuff, work on my building, get some decorating done on it. Well, I was doing that mostly off camera, but like the hollow hill and stuff, I was doing that on camera. And I figured, you know what, let's uh, set up some... Uh, three times or duplication stuff from mechanism and it works it's a little derpy but it works i mean what we have here we have a farm from under io it's a farming station this is producing potatoes the potatoes are extracted via the wireless block extender right here this is also how power gets into the uh farming station so there's water under there if you can't see it so it gets water that way so all the potatoes as they get harvested will be extracted from this block extender, which then get pushed to either crusher. Um, it is unfortunately going to fill this one up right here first, and then it fills this one up. Uh, right now, it's not really a terrible problem. If it does become one, I can manually balance it. But as you can see right now, this thing is completely full. Uh, we have any uh, poisonous potatoes coming here for now. So the uh, power ends up leaving this energy cube via the basic universal cable. There is a line underneath the floor here, which comes all the way over to these factories. Uh, we have four factories here. This is a purifying factory, a crushing, an enriching, and a smelting. The uh, basic way that this works, let's go ahead and take uh, some... Eh, no, we got some osmium on us. All right, so we have this advanced factory here for purifying. If we go ahead and put... Let's do three at a time. Put these three in here. What's going to happen is it's going to consume power and oxygen to create osmium clumps, I believe. Three osmium clumps per ore. And then they get pushed over to this crusher. The uh, clumps are then going to be crushed down to dirty dust. And the dirty dust is going to come over to the enricher, which is going to get enriched back into just regular osmium dust. And then they finally get smelted up over here in the smelting factory. It might take a little bit to get all the way over here, but it is working. And then once everything is said and done, it gets ejected up into here, and then it goes into the appropriate barrel. Um, I ran into one or two little snags, the main one being that Tinker's Construct Aluminum Ore actually doesn't work for this. Um, and I'm not quite sure why. I think it might be because of what the ore dictionary name is. I think it's actually registered as uh, natural aluminum instead of ore aluminum, and that might be what this checks for. But as it is, though, this uh, it does work fairly well. There are uh, two big downsides right now, and that is oxygen production. Uh, I only have a single electrolytic separator and two gas burning generators. These is, This is power neutral, so all my oxygen I need is generated for free. It is, however, not fast. Because of that, if I were to get this running at full tilt, it can't keep up. So it's going to go as fast as this machine does, which is not terribly fast. Um, I would say it's actually downright slow. It would be okay if it were something where I could just put a stack of ore in and then just log off. It'll, by the time I come back, it'll be fine. However, if I need something right now, it's not such a good option. Um, anyway, so we have the electrolytic separator here. If you notice, this is continually fluctuating back and forth as it consumes water and it's being replaced. Uh, it has nothing in it right now. It is using 1,600 redstone flux per tick, which are both being generated by these guys, so it's doing good. It's doing well. <laughs> All right, so the uh, oxygen that's produced by this is being pushed into this gas tank, which has got a bit of a surplus now. It's actually building up. And the tank pushes over to the factory when this thing is low in oxygen. The reason I have it set up this way instead of using, say, a tube, the tube would connect. What would happen is this guy would fill up with the thousand oxygen it can hold. And then this would fill up with, I think, the 1,000 it can hold, maybe 2,000. I'm not sure the exact number. By using this gas tank in between, I'm adding a total of 96,000 oxygen as a buffer, which is a fairly good amount. And once that gets full, the guy in here will get full, will start to fill up. And this really isn't something that I'm going to need right now. It's not something that's practical if this were loaded just on a... Uh, home computer but on a server it's actually something that for me would be useful because this area would be chunk loaded 
So while I'm at work, I would be accumulating a fairly good buffer of oxygen, so I could run this at decent speed without needing to worry. Alright. Oh, speaking of server, this right now is actually not a server. If we go ahead and look at myself, I am got the uh, Steve skin. We are playing on a local copy of my world. It turns out that for the uh, farming station right here from uh, Ender.io, and the wireless block extender, when I was trying to link these guys up, I kept getting a crash. And I don't believe the crash has anything to do with Ender.io. I think it's to do with the refined location, refined relocation, excuse me, or Cauldron. And I say Cauldron because I had to use Cauldron and the multiplayer server to make it actually run better than what it does here. So, I mean, right now this is fine just messing around the base. But if I wanted to do any exploration and stuff, it, it's, it's not so great. Um, eventually Forge will patch that out, but they don't have it quite yet. So we're just temporarily where uh, we have this backed up, and I can just upload any changes back to the server, and it should be fine that way. Um, anyway, so what I have done besides that, we have uh, worked on the building here, so it's, uh, well, I suppose actually the first thing I should say is the dirt is done. It worked really well, really good. Um, I've been working in a building. It is unfortunately tragically square. I'm trying to do some things to uh, mitigate that. Like I like the way that this kind of looks, and I'm thinking I'm going to continue that all the way up. Basically, I just want to give it a little bit of kind of like a depth to it texture without having to go crazy. I might even contemplate replacing these guys right here with uh, clear guys panes instead of just the actual blocks to give it a little bit more texture. But I do like the idea for these uh, slopes right here, just have them as like structural embellishments on it. I'm thinking of taking this building up to a grand total of uh, three stories. So it'll be one, two, three. And then for the on top of the third one, we're going to have one last structure, but it's going to be like a rooftop garden. And that's where I figure I'll do all like the Baltania stuff I'll do up in the, up in the sky. It'll also be a fairly decent amount away from any wood, so if I need to have any exposed lava, we're not going to cause any lasting harm. There we go. Alright, so what else is there to show? Um, really, there's nothing else down in my base down there of interest to pick up on. I've uh, Most of my work today has been up here, and the footage that I had recorded for this is unfortunately lost. Um, I have the footage. It is, however, completely silent. For some reason, DX Story decided to change default settings, and it recorded speakers twice that were silent. And it's frustrating. And I, yeah. Um, so what I can actually do though is I can, uh, while I'm talking about this, I could probably go ahead and roll some footage about some of the stuff that I did. Um, one of the things I really had fun with is I found a minor tree sapling from. Twilight Forest, and I was able to actually take the sapling, plant it on top of a hollow hill in the Twilight Forest, and get a ton of resources. I mean, altogether, I ended up getting about uh, six stacks of lapis blocks, a couple stacks of redstone blocks, many stacks of iron ore and gold ore and stuff. The, what I had in the uh, chest here were pretty much the leftover remnants of that, um, and I th actually think I might have a little bit more than that got a decent amount of emeralds, decent amount of diamonds. I think I only ended up getting about two blocks of diamonds, but I'm not going to complain about that. I think, I'm not completely sure, but I think that there's actually uh, plenty more ore in that hollow hill that it has to mine up. The tree is still standing. I didn't take it down or anything. I just turned it off. The uh, button was rather amusing to find that you could right-click on it to turn it on and off. I didn't think the tree would do that. Um, let's see. That's pretty much it. The only other thing that I really uh, maybe not touched base on is that I have fluxed up all of my tools. And I have to tell you, it is glorious. I, I feel so great living in a civilized age where someone can charge their tools instead of having to repair them. It's just, it's just awesome. Plus the uh, fact there is a fairly good chance that a uh, thermal expansion will be coming out fairly soon means that I'll be able to maybe try some other stuff. Um, I 
heard really good things about the uh, dark steel tools from under io and i'd kind of like to try to see what they're like i mean at this point it'd be really hard to beat what i can do with these tinkers construct tools but i mean really it's not a i would like to see what they are and what they can do because this uh pickaxe is pretty good i think i need to make a silk touch hammer actually for farming ice so that guy's uh, we'll leave him in there um, anyway, other than that, I really can't say that anything else has happened. Um, this has been me rambling on for quite a little bit now, and unfortunately, so much as I would like to add additional stuff to this video after losing about a day and a half's worth of work, I don't have it in me to go ahead and record more stuff, so what we're going to do, we're just going to call this a short episode. Hopefully I was able to reuse some of the uh, stuff that I had mentioned. If I did, I you saw what it was, and it was uh, pretty neat. Um, if I didn't, I am a jerk for not showing it to you, and I am so sorry. But I want to go ahead and thank you for watching this short episode of Bevo's Tech Pack. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a message below. And as always, have a good day, and enjoy the sunset.